Guys, welcome to the channel. We're gonna do a quick walk around on this 2020 Ford Raptor that I've outfitted for overlanding. If you guys have any questions, leave it down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, think about doing it because it's really the only reason I keep making these videos is because people seem to enjoy them. So we're gonna do a walk around on this. I'm gonna show you what I chose, why, and yeah, we're gonna go from there. All right, so we're gonna start at the back, pretty much where everything is. I went ahead and did the Lightner Modular Rack System is what they call it. I call it modular because this rear load bar underneath the tent does unscrew on either side and it will slide all the way forward if you want to load dirt bikes or something in the back. Um, I've got their XL gear pod on the passenger side. In this gear pod I'm keeping currently um, all of the cooking supplies. So we've got a stove, all the kitchen equipment up above, all the dishwashing stuff and cutting boards and propane gadgets and gizmos everything's pretty much cooking and kitchen stuff in this gear pod and it works really well it's a it's a pretty darn big area so it's holding everything and i think i can fit some more stuff in there this is just a test trip so it was kind of like to see what we need or what we forgot or if i brought too much that kind of thing on the other side we've got two of the smaller gear pods and i've got two roto packs mounted up to the back of that uh, just two gallon gas cans uh, when we're not bringing the trailer and all that gas because really this is going to be for overlanding without the trailer this is kind of just a play run we brought the toys because we're going to be doing some other stuff too so but i'd have these filled up uh, when we're actually doing just overland trips in the truck these two gear pods i've got all my air tools uh, compressor lights I've got a hatchet in there pretty much all of our toiletries um, is in the other gear pod just all the stuff we need for deodorants and toothbrush, toothpaste, tissues, all that kind of stuff. Uh, on the back of the truck for chase lights, I'm running the uh, Baja Designs S2, uh, not the Pro, just the Sports. These are floods, amber, super bright. Very happy with them, just got those installed the other day. Got a little bungee cord here between the rack, just uh, with a couple of lights for cooking, which worked really well last night. On top, I've got a rooftop tent. This is a clamshell style aluminum rooftop tent. Now, I'm not gonna say it's a, a brand that I would recommend or anything like that. Basically, uh, the rooftop tent, I found a small business on Craigslist that had these listed for really, really cheap. Um, if you guys look online, you're gonna see rooftop tents that look like this for about 3,500, upwards of $4,000, um, pretty much identical and looks super thin when it closes super easy to pop up uh, i'm 6'4 we fit in it fine last night the two of us it's 55 inches wide and so far it's pretty good but i got this for two grand so basically the guy ordered some from china as probably everybody else does and he was just selling them for dirt cheap so we'll kind of see it looks like it's got a little roof leak already on the interior so i think i got what i paid for but i think i can fix it otherwise i'm really happy with the form and function of it like I said, light, thin, um, big enough for two people, comfortable last night. And uh, I think the little epoxy up top, or if I check a little, a couple little spots or something like that, I can get that little leak remedied. But I'm not going to recommend the company just because, again, uh, it was kind of a one-off deal for that guy. Uh, in the bed of the truck, I've also got hard-mounted propane. So it's a one-gallon propane um, with a connection that will fit the Coleman stove and the barbecue. And that's worked out really well. Again, first time using all this stuff. Super, super happy with the propane situation rather than bringing all the green cans. I did bring them, which are in this gear pod because, again, testing stuff, I wanted to have a backup just in case this, for some reason, didn't work. So we'll go over the stuff in the bed of the truck. All right, so in the bed of the truck, I've got the Pro Eagle Jack and uh, the Big Jack from them. And super, super happy just to be carrying this around. It's hard mounted to the bed. It's in its little cradle situation that it locks down to. I've got a padlock on it. I'm just really happy bringing this along because this jack is easy to use. It's lightweight, it's giant, and I can use it for the trailer, the truck, the Razor, anything. It's just really nice to know you have a substantial jack in case it's needed. So really happy to be carrying that around. In the back, I've got a little trash can, one of those collapsible trash cans. It's just a miniature version. Really, really happy with that. I thought about the trash roo bags and stuff like that, but obviously I'm not carrying a spare tire in the back or a place to hang it that I really liked. And this has actually worked out really well. I'm happy that I went this route cheap also. All right, I have two basically storage pods in the back, just some Plano 
uh, containers I got from Amazon. Um, everybody knows this brand for like fishing gear and stuff like that, but tackle boxes and whatnot. But happy with it. Uh, I've gotten this one. I've just got clothes. We're keeping food like dry food chips, breads, coffee stuff in that container. And the other one, I've got basically all recovery gear in here. There's batteries, there's fuses, there's a whole toolbox underneath. Tons of tools, small shovel, um, jumper cables, saws, all kinds of stuff. Basically anything over the years of doing camping and things like that that I could think of that I would want to have just in case something happened. So this box has got everything I need if we have some kind of failure somewhere, whether it be on the truck or bringing a toy or anything for the most part. So this guy's all full of tools and recovery gear. All right, so obviously when you build a Ford Raptor for overlanding, the rear suspension's really soft for it, and it's gonna squat, and you're not gonna be happy with it. So I knew ahead of time doing this that I was gonna have to do something to remedy the back, and the only real solution, if you wanna keep the truck a performance truck for off-roading, is replacing the leaf springs. So I had the rear leaf spring swapped out with Deaver's M44 package. So this is their heavy duty leaf spring and it raised the truck up in the rear. Um, basically, I think it's a plus four setup over stock. So with all the overlanding stuff on it and the truck totally decked out, it sits only maybe mm, three quarters of an inch higher in the, in the back than the front. And that's good. Not only does the leaf springs make the truck ride 10 times better than stock by itself, just if you want to improve the ride quality of the rear of the truck, but it supports all the weight for overlanding and the plus four I did because we will be towing the toys on occasion like this, not just overlanding. So pulling another 5,000 pounds plus in the back with all that tongue weight and the truck sat fairly level yesterday. I'd say it only squatted maybe an inch in the back. Uh, over the front with everything in the back and pulling the trailer and the ride quality is outstanding So super 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 happy with that We'll work our way around to the front and I'll show you guys a couple of modifications. I did not a whole lot up here But some good-looking stuff All right front of the truck we've got an addictive desert designs front bumper This is our bolt-on bumper. I was not willing to cut the frame even though those skid plates and the, and the bumpers where you do cut the frame, they look awesome. They do look super cool. I wasn't willing to cut the frame. I just didn't want to make that permanent of a modification on the truck if I ever get rid of it. In there, we've got a 20-inch Baja Designs Onyx light bar, and that thing is stupid bright. Uh, this is my first time with Baja Designs lights. Um, always run KC in the past, really love KC lights. This is just kind of the lighting I wanted for this build when I was thinking about doing it for different reasons. And that light bar is awesome. Uh, we are also running the S2 Sports up front. This is the spot and uh, flood combo on each side. Just some cheap mounts on Amazon were perfect. These were like 30 bucks for the pair, bolt into a stock location and uh, are awesome. Super happy with that. On this side, I've got, uh, I'll show you guys the electronics on the inside, but this is the two meter antenna. And I've got it on, it's a diamond antenna on a diamond mount. And uh, I don't recommend this mount. The, the, the Raptor hood was a little too thick for it and I had to modify this mount a little bit. You may damage your hood. Uh, I was careful and did not, but wasn't the right choice, even though I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, and it looks good and I'm happy with the location. Uh, I would recommend a different mount so you don't risk damaging the hood. So we're going to go on the inside. I'm going to show you guys the electronics that I have. Communication setup. All right, I was going to show you real quick before we go over communications. Underneath that big section of the rear seat, there's kind of a storage compartment. And there I'm carrying a fire extinguisher and a bunch of odds and ends, like a, a battery jumper in case I kill the truck battery. I've used those before. They work really well. Nice to have. Plus, they're a charging device and a flashlight and everything else. So I've got that I've got some emergency equipment I've got a first aid kit bungee cords I've got a bag of straps um, and some like matches uh, emergency blanket stuff like that these are just things I've accumulated over the years and I really wasn't doing anything with they were 
kind of just taken up a storage spot in the garage and I thought some of this would be good to have on the truck. Obviously some of it essential being first aid and fire extinguisher, I think you should always probably carry those when you start doing all kinds of wiring electronics and stuff on the truck. You should probably carry a fire extinguisher and propane and all that on the back. So um, yeah, just wanted to show you guys that real quick, keeping odds and ends in the back, good little cubby compartment. And then on the other side, underneath that seat, if you can see it, I've got the uh, ham radio mounted on top of the inverter that comes with the truck uh, underneath the jumper seat. Um, that's where I've mounted it and that way I can still hear everything and I'll go over why that's back there when we move up front. All right, so this is probably my favorite part of the inside of the truck. <laughs> so it took a lot of planning and a lot of research to find stuff that I wanted to fit the idea I had on how everything was gonna be mounted in here. It's a nice truck. I usually, like in my past Jeeps and older vehicles, I'll screw stuff through the dashboards and vehicles if I just want it mounted somewhere and, and I don't care, you know. But in here, I, I care a little bit more. I didn't want to go screwing holes and drilling things if I didn't have to. So I've got my phone and the iPad mini, which is running the guy GPS, and obviously just the phone mount. Those are on ProClip USA is the company name mounts and these things are fantastic a little bit expensive i want to say for both of these mounts i spent a couple hundred bucks between the cradles and the mounts themselves but they clip in to uh, the vent location on the front just using an already you know a slot that's in there and then they clip into the uh the air conditioning ducts um, the vents up front and there's no permanent anything you're not drilling or screwing or anything like that and they are rock freaking solid um, I also wanted everything obviously clustered around in one area so that you're not looking around left to right and all that for all of your stuff. You can just look one location, you've got your phone, you've got your iPad, you've got, you know, that stuff, all communication stuff right in the same spot on the truck. So there is the ham radio in the middle, a really nice Yezu. Um, why I like Yezu for the ham radio idea is they have detachable face plates. So that face plate is running an extension back to the uh, actual body of the, the radio. And, and I didn't have to mount the whole thing on the dash, which I did not want to do. That's why the uh, uh, faceplate is detachable, why I like that setup from that particular manufacturer. There's some other ham radios, too, that have detachable faces, uh, if you guys want to look into that. But really, really happy with it. It's got a big, nice touch screen on it, color. Um, it's a nice ham radio. I've got the mount down here, uh, or sorry, the mic down here with a magnetic mount. These are just cheap walmart mounts i was walking through the store looking for ideas on how to get this stuff mounted they're just 3m taped to the dash they have little adjustable swivel heads and it's just a magnetic uh setup really happy about that i was super stoked when i came across that by accident on the other side i've got the cb radio this is a portable cb just midland radio i didn't want to do anything super fancy for cb because mainly that's for just monitoring traffic um, when we're driving on long trips i like to you know, if there's a traffic delay or something coming up, truckers are always talking about all of that stuff and you can get a heads up on certain situations. And I've had them even just listening to them before um, give me a workaround on an accident where I got off the freeway and basically followed all those guys and avoided a couple hours worth of sitting in traffic. So uh, not planning to do much communication with that, but you know, in case we're in a convoy too where we're off-roading with other people and they're running CBs, it's nice to have that option. Otherwise it was mainly just for monitoring traffic. Um, that's hooked up to the 12 volt in the center console and a two foot fire stick, which you guys saw that whip on the back or that intent on the back when I was looking at the tent. Up top, we have a Garmin inReach Mini, just mounted to a, a suction cup ram uh, mount. And the Garmin inReach Mini uh, is probably the most important thing actually to me for being off grid. Uh, that gives me the uh, ability to send text messages via satellite. So um, without cell reception, I can text anybody uh, through my phone uh, or even on the device itself, uh, no matter what, without reception. So that's one thing to let people know, or if you have a significant other, you're by yourself, you want to let that person know that you've made it to camp, you're okay, or yada yada, you can text from any place, anytime. You do pay a monthly service for that. And then the most important feature of it is the SOS button. So if you are in total danger, hurt, lost uh, and you have that on you and you need help now you can press that sos emergency button and the convoy will be coming to get you 
Um, and that's the most important part about it. So no matter what you can get out of a situation, if you are in massive trouble, somebody's injured, somebody needs help, you can hit that SOS and they're sending everybody to come find you. So other than that, that's pretty much the inside of the truck. Um, really happy with the layout and how everything turned out. Like I said, everything's in the same viewable spot, which I wanted. Um, just nice, tidy, clean, neat. And so far, working out really, really good. I also have that that ham radio mounted to a Built Right Industries uh, F-150 mount. So that mounts right into the uh, dash area, that little basically cubby that's not used for anything. And that's worked out well, a little Built Right in. There's obviously a bunch of slots on there. You can mount some other things. So that is the 2020 Ford Raptor build for overlanding. Really happy with it. Also forgot to mention using the Camco little leveling blocks which has worked out perfectly over stacking rocks. I'd, I just carried a little pack of those and that worked out great. Super easy, easy to put away in store. But guys, if you like the video, if you have any questions, again, let me know down below. I appreciate it. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't. Other than that, we're gonna get back to it. Check you guys out on the next video. Bye.